This is Module 3, Lesson 7. We're now subtracting fractions from numbers between 1 and 2. So we're going to start by letting you know that we should not follow these directions anymore because it makes it difficult when the numbers get larger. So we've now adjusted to a new method. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the problem vertically. And when we rewrite the problem vertically, it looks just like this. Next thing we do is we have to set up our new fractions just like we used to. The first thing that I always do in order to not forget is I take this whole number and I bring it over here. Now I'm going to look at my two fractions, one-third and one-half. And I'm going to do just like I used to and figure out what is the common denominator between three and two. And when I list out my multiples, most of you can do this in your head by now, but if you can and you need to practice listing out your multiples, it's just like this, like we used to. And I notice that my least common multiple or least common denominator will be six. So I use six here, and I use six here. There's no whole number. So now I'm going to ask myself, what did I do to this three to get to six? And I multiplied by two, so I have to multiply by two. And then what did I do to my 2 to get to 6? I multiplied by 3, so I have to multiply by 3, and I get 3. So now I see that I have 1 and 2 6 minus 3 6. And for those of you who are having a tough time seeing that, I'm going to just rewrite it right here so it's easier for you to see. I can't subtract. 2, 6 minus 3, 6, because uh, subtraction does not have the commutative property. So I'm going to need to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from my whole number, which is 0. Well, then I have to figure out what a whole is worth. Well, since my denominator is 6, it's worth 6, 6. So in order to figure out what will go right here in the numerator, I'm really doing 2, 6 plus my new whole of 6, 6, and that's 8, 6. So my new number up here is 8 of 8, 6. And then 8, 6 minus 3, 6 is 5, 6. We have to remember that when we're working with a whole like this, whatever the denominator is over here, my whole is the same number on top and the bottom. So in this case, it was 6, 6. We'll go to this next one, which is 1 and 1 fifth. We're going to rewrite it. Many of you can do this first part beautifully, so we know we're going to set it up. Bring over our whole number. When I look at my 5 and I look at my 3, I see that my denominator is now 15. And over here, I know that I did 5 times what is 15? 5 times 3, so 1 times 3 is 3, just like we used to do. 3 times 5 is 15, and 1 times 5 is 5. I see from here right away that I cannot subtract 3 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths, so I have to borrow, and that becomes a 0. One whole is 15 fifteenths, so I have to add 15 to my numerator, and this becomes an 18. So 18 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths is 13 fifteenths. Next, we have 1 and 3 fourths minus 4 fifths. The difference here, we're now moving on to where we don't have the, same, the numerator of a 1. So we are going to bring the whole number of 1 over. We have a 4 and a 5, and we know our denominator is now 20. 4 times 5 is 20, and 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 4 is 16. We cannot subtract 15 minus 16, so we have to borrow from the 1 and make it a 0. And since the denominator is 20, we have to add 20 twentieths to 15 twentieths, and we end up with 35 twentieths. 35 minus 16 is 19 twentieths. Next, we have 1 and 4 ninths minus one-half. So we're going to set up our new fractions again. Bring over that one. We have two and nine as our denominator, so we know it's going to be 18. Nine times two is 18, and four times two is eight. Two times nine is 18, and one times nine is nine. We cannot do 
8 minus 9, so we have to borrow and make this a 0. Since my denominator is 18, I'm adding 18 plus 8, and I have 26. And 26 minus 9 gets me to 17 eighteenths. Here we have 1 and 1 fourth minus 1 and minus 1 third. And our common denominator between these two is 12. We have to bring over that whole number. 4 times 3 is 12, and 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 times 4 is 4. So now we have to borrow, because we cannot do 3 minus 4. This is a 0. We have to add our 12 to our 3, and we end up with 15. And 15 twelfths minus 4 twelfths comes out to 11 twelfths. The next one of 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 third. I'm going to keep this one all in the same color like you would with your pencil. We carry over the 1. 15 is our common denominator. 5 times 3 is 15, so 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 5 is 15, and 1 times 5 is 5. We can't do this, so I have to borrow. And then I have to add 15 to my 3, which would make this 18, and 18 minus 5 is 13 fifteenths. We have 1 and 3 eighths minus 1 half. Show it again in some color to help some of you out. Bring over the 1. 16 is my common denominator. 8 times 2 is 16, so 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 8 is 16, so 1 times 8 is 8. I can't solve this because it's 6 minus 8, so I need to borrow. 16 needs to be added to 6, which would give me 22. 22 minus 8 would be 14 sixteenths. The problem with this right here is that I can't leave it. I have to simplify it. I can divide them both by 2. Next, we have 1 and 2 fifths minus 1 half. When we go through these, they both can become 10. I have to borrow. I have to add 10 plus 4. When I do that, I end up with 14. 14 minus 5 is 9 tenths. And that is how we subtract from numbers that are between 1 and 2.